So welcome. This is Zeb Weeks. He's an attorney just down the road, a personal injury attorney at Flickergen Suffer. How do you say it? Flickergen? Flickinger, Sutterfield, and Bolton. <laughs> Flickinger, Sutterfield, and Bolton. I've worked with him for quite a while, and he's really good at what he does. And so we're going to ask him a few questions that I get as from patients, from those who have been in a car accident and how to deal with insurances. And I asked Zeb because he's the best person to work to answer those questions. So we're going to ask him these questions. So Zeb, tell us a little more about yourself, how long you've been doing this, and go from there. Yeah, th thank you, Jared. Um, I actually came to uh, the law late in life. Um, I was a professor before that. So I, um, I taught at BYU, BYU-Idaho, and BYU-Hawaii, all three BYUs. And then my wife got tired of, uh, of, what, of jumping around and she said, why don't we do something else? So I went to law school and found my way into the personal injury world and I really like it. And that's because you really do help people. So I've been doing this for about six years since I uh, graduated from law school and right here in Provo, but we have offices in Salt Lake as well. And the great thing about this job is I do get to travel anywhere I need to go to um, see people. A lot of people are, you know, after an accident, they don't have their vehicle, they can't travel, um, other problems. So we go, we go to you. Oh, that's great. You've helped out a lot of our patients that we've had come car accidents and then you get, help them get back on their feet. So, but when somebody gets in a car accident, first things I've always, I always tell someone to get, make sure everything's safe and everyone's okay. Um, but after that, if everyone is okay, what do you recommend the next thing that they should do? Call the police. Call the police. Is that yeah, call 911 or? Call 911. Sure. Call 911. Call 911. They'll, they'll get a police officer there and ambulance if you need it. Um, it, if, it if the injury isn't that bad, we don't recommend taking the ambulance because it's just a $1,500 ride to the hospital. But if you can get a ride, that's fine. Um, the emergency room, we don't recommend it unless you are really in some serious pain because they, they will charge a lot of money and that what they'll do is they'll check you out just to make sure you don't have any broken bones or internal bleeding and they'll release you. And then you'll get a, a bill for $20,000. If it's, but if it is something serious, get to the ER. There's no problem with going to the ER. Yeah, no problem. If it's not serious, when do you recommend someone see a medical provider on their own or? Absolutely. That? At that point, and you've probably explained this to your patients, they have $3,000. Everybody in Utah has to have this on their car insurance. So everybody has it at least $3,000 and uh, go see any medical doctor that you want. So you go see your provider. If you want to go straight to a chiropractor, go ahead and do it. If you know that you're filling your spine, you got problems, uh, go see a doctor immediately. Okay. Um, say so what, What's your reasoning to call 911 every, every time? Or is there some cases you say some people are like hesitant to call 911 on just a little fender bender or? On a little fender bender, you don't have to, and the police don't encourage it. But I like it because the police determine fault. And that's the nice thing. They weren't there to witness the accident. So it's not, a, it's not something that can be used in court. However, it is strong evidence. The police officer will show up. He'll talk to everyone. Uh, I forgot to mention this, find out if there are any witnesses. I've had many cases where the cop shows up and the witness is already gone and we lose the witness. And sometimes we lose the case if you don't have that independent witness. So if you can get a witness that saw the accident, get the witness. Okay. Okay. And so Utah, sometimes people get really confused on the at fault. Utah is an at fault state. Can you explain that a little bit more so that people understand that? Uh, what that means generally when you hear it is it just means that your insurance is going to pay the first $3,000. And then after that, the at fault vehicle will then pay the rest of your bills, but they won't pay them immediately. And so you'll settle with them at the end and they will reimburse your insurance for whatever bills they've paid for that first 3000 so that's probably what you're referring to, but basically, I, and I'm not sure if this is what you're referring to, Jared, as well. Yeah. Um, the only people who can make claims for general damages or for money damages, we call it, that means money to get a settlement, are people who are not at fault in the accident. 
So okay. I don't, is that, was that your question? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, pay, pay, patients just get confused because they say they're not at fault, but they, we still bill their insurance. That's right. But just the state law, we just, it's what the state tells, tells us to do. And, and once that 3000 is up, then bam, they can use their health insurance. Before that 3000 is used up, you can't even use your health insurance. So okay. everyone has to use that 3000 first. Mm -hmm. And then if they're, if they're going to say like a chiropractor and say the health insurance doesn't cover it, then you definitely want to get a lawyer to um, sign that lien. So protecting um, the provider so that the provider can treat you on a lien. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now many patients don't know this, but the, if someone does seek medical care, does that increase their auto premium insurance? So there's a law in Utah and it's administrative rule is what it's called. And it says that insurance companies cannot raise rates if you are not at fault in an accident. So you can go get medical care. You can do everything you want. If you were not at fault, they cannot raise your rates. That would be, that would be against uh, a rule and the insurance would be getting huge trouble if they did that. However, I've seen insurance companies, it's rare. I've seen insurance companies drop you for making a claim. So it, it, the rule doesn't say they can't drop you, but go ahead and go get, I, for me, that never bothers me because you can get cheaper insurance after that anyway. You were not at fault in the accident. Another carrier will pick you up. Yeah. But it's very, very rare for them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Some patients are nervous that it's going to raise their rates, but it shouldn't. So by law. Um, so the big question is when does somebody need to see, at least talk to an attorney? I tell patients that they should probably at least talk to you right away, right away. To help you know, answer. Yeah. If you, if you were at fault in the accident, you don't need to talk to an attorney. Um, if you were not injured in the accident, you don't need to talk to an attorney, but if you were injured, talk to an attorney, even if it's a small injury and talk to them as soon as possible, because you, you the sooner we know this because the, the uh, insurance industry has actually published books on this. We know how they work. And I've talked to adjusters about it. But basically, when an attorney is on the case and representing you, they not only will help manage your care and take care of everything, but the insurance company raises their reserves, it's called. So if you don't have an attorney, let's say they'll set aside $5,000 for you. If you say, oh, I have a little pain in the back, let's just put 5,000. You have an attorney, they, they say three to four times as much. So they'll, they'll just set aside 15,000. What that means is at the end of the case, generally you can settle it for a lot more money than you could have before. So the attorney will end up making his fees just, just I mean, he'll get his fees paid because he's gonna increase the value of the case. Okay, so explain that more. So Will the patient pay you any money? So What's no, the so the client, yeah. So the client will never ever pay us money ever. So we, we pay for costs. We work on a contingency fee basis, which means that the client will only pay us if we make money. So if we make money for the client, then they'll pay us. And the great thing about our firm is we never take more money than the client. A lot of, a lot of firms will. They have high overhead, they have high um, uh, adver advertising costs. And so when they have a case where let's say the person has, um, let's say the, the person has $60,000 in medical bills and there's a $100,000 policy and we get that $100,000 policy, that attorney will take 35%, let's say. So you have 60,000 plus 35,000 the client will end up with $5,000 and the attorney will say, and, I, and I, we're not kidding about this. Most of those big firms will do this. All of them will. They'll say, we got your medical bills paid and here's $5,000. And they'll go home with 35,000. We will never do that. So we would split the money and send the client home with 20 something more than us. And then we would take what, you know, less than them. Yeah. That's very unique and very helpful for the patient for, the client and everybody on board. So rest at ease for everybody that's listening to know that you can help. Yeah.
Yeah. yeah, it's and and by by contract, the attorneys can do it, right? You sign up for a third, they'll take their third and say, "Hey, we helped you out, got your medical bills paid." And the clients, I've heard clients come in and tell me, "Hey, I got my medical bills paid." And I'll and I'll say, but "Did you get any money?" No. <laughs> when, <laughs> when they come from different firms, you know. Yeah. Um, one concern that some patients have or clients have are they don't want to sue anybody, but they are still hurt. Uh, I totally understand that. It's very awkward. Um, the law requires that you sue the person if you're going to get the insurance to pay. So you can't sue the insurance company, even though it's the insurance company that is on the hook and should pay according to their contract with their insured. So what we do is we do whatever the client wants. If the client only wants us to negotiate the case and they'll take, and I've had clients do this, they'll take whatever the insurance uh, pays or offers at the end, even if it's a bad offer, that's fine. You're in charge of the case. We won't force you to sue. But we are here and we do litigate. We're a litigating firm if you do want to sue. The person will never, ever pay the money. We will never go after that person if you don't want us to. And generally, we don't. We only sue them if there's insurance and we make sure the insurance pays. We would, if there was an insurance or the ins in the end, uh, the policy limits were too low, we would never go after that other person unless the person wants us to, but generally we don't. Yeah, that's very, it's very helpful. It, help. it, was an, it, it was an accident, right? So right. we understand that. Understand that. So just put us our personal at ease and the way we want to think about things. So um, how else can you help if they're hurt and they can't work or they can't do things at home? How else can you help them at work or home? Cause that's something that people don't know they, that uh, they have access to. Yeah, this is a really cool service that we provide uh, as part of your $3,000 benefit that your insurance pays. It's called personal injury protection or PIP is what we often refer to it as. You can get household services, and lost wages up to a certain amount of your lost wages. So if you lose, you, 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 you start missing work, we can claim that for you. We don't take fees on that. We just help you get it and claim it. Your insurance pays it. And then at the end of the case, the other insurance, the at-fault carrier will reimburse your insurance. The other thing is called household services. And household services are $20 a day benefit that your insurance pays from the date of the accident up to one year after the accident. And you just basically what, what you're saying when you make that claim is that I need help at home. Uh, I can't do things that I did before. And the person that's been helping you, your spouse, uh, someone over 18, it can be anyone, a friend, just signs that they helped you. And then your insurance will pay that within 30 days. So that's a way we can get some money into the pocket. Once again, we don't take fees on that, but it's a way that we can get money into the pocket of the client immediately. And many, many times I've gotten more money, more money than I, way more money than I've received in fees for the client that, that, that would cover my fees. So they not only get that settlement at the end and then I get my fees, the amount of money that I got for them in household services is higher than their settlement or than my fees. So they end up getting, it's a great benefit that we help you get. It's a, an added benefit. That benefit, and lot of, what a lot of people don't know, they actually have You're right. access and, to. It, right, and that those lot those household services are actually it's a benefit, and the PIP, the three thousand, those are two benefits for at fault drivers as well. So if you're at fault, you can still make those claims on your insurance. Yeah, yeah. So um, all I know is you've worked really well with our patients, and you've helped all of them. And if there's anybody who wants to reach out to you, how can they reach you if they've been in a car accident or know somebody that has been? Uh, they can just call me. You can look us up online, Flickinger, uh, Sutterfield and Bolton. Our number is there. You can also chat through that through online, or you can call me at 801-370-0505, or they can call my cell phone at 385-208-2433. All my clients have my cell phone. Great. Thanks, Ev. You're a great help. And um, I tell everyone, if they've been in a car accident, it's best just to at least talk to you to know what they can, where you can help them. So 
Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it.